You're about to hear the Children's Hour podcast. Thanks for being a listener. You can find a lot more information about this episode at childrenshour.org. Enjoy the show. Why did the frog and toad buy an electric car? I don't know why. Because they were going green. (laughs) (laughs) It's time for the Children's Hour. Kids Public Radio. Kids presents Hawaiian Playground. That's Kialii Richelle. And that's the Toad song. Kialii is from Maui. And the Children's Hour is heard every week in Maui on KAKU. Hello, Maui, Hawaii, out there in the middle of the ocean. This is the Children's Hour. I'm Katie Stone. I'm so happy to be with you as always. We have so many great kids with us on Zoom. Hello, kids. Hi, everyone on Zoom. Hi. I am excited today. And who do we have with us today? Hi, it's Illuminata. Hi, Daddy. Hi, it's Sam. Hi, it's Daniel. Hi, it's Evan. It's Lucas Griego. Hi, it's Kate. Hi, it's Lily May. Hi, pals. It's Melissa. Hi, it's Corbett. Cocky Doodle Doo, it's Maya Lou. Hi, it's Max Malone. Hello, it's Kodiak. You guys. I am so excited about the show today because we're talking about frogs and toads. Yay, 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 yay! We are all such big fans of frogs and toads, and we can't wait today to learn a lot more about them. We're going to have with us today Josh Butler. He is a senior zookeeper of the reptiles and amphibians at the Albuquerque Zoo. And we're going to hear from the kids in the Extinction Diaries about frogs. There's a lot of great frog music, including this one. Please, can we all sing along? Five green and speckled frogs sitting on a speckled log, eating some most delicious bugs. Yum, yum. One jumped into the pool where it was nice and cool. Then there were four green speckled frogs. Ribbit, ribbit. 
Four green and speckled frogs sitting on a speckled log, eating some most delicious bugs. Yum, yum. One jumped into the pool where it was nice and cool. Then there were three green speckled frogs. Ribbit, ribbit. Three green and speckled frogs sitting on a speckled log, eating some most delicious bugs. Yum, yum. One jumped into the pool where it was nice and cool. Then there were two green speckled frogs. Ribbit, ribbit. Two green and speckled frogs sitting on a speckled log, eating some most delicious bugs. Yum, yum. One jumped into the pool where it was nice and cool. Then there was one green speckled frog. Ribbit, ribbit. One green and speckled frog sitting on a speckled log, eating some most delicious bugs. Yum, yum. He jumped into the pool where it was nice and cool. Then there were no green speckled frogs. Ribbit, ribbit, ribbit. That's Miss Lynn from her CD called Outside the Lines. You're listening to the Children's Hour. I'm Katie Stone. And with us today on the show is the senior zookeeper at the Albuquerque Biopark in the Reptiles and Amphibians Department, Josh Butler. Welcome to the Children's Hour, Josh. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. We're excited you're here. We asked you to come on the show today because we wanted to learn more about frogs and toads. Everyone on the crew are pretty big fans of frogs and toads. And so I know we have lots and lots of questions from the kids on the crew. Let's start with Airdrie. What's the difference about frogs and toads? Well, if you're talking to a herpetologist, that's someone who studies reptiles and amphibians, uh, they would tell you that toads are actually just very specialized frogs. Uh, for a long time, we always thought of toads and frogs as different classes or, or groups of animals. But uh, now we have a better understanding that uh, toads are really just specialized frogs. Uh, they, have, they tend to have shorter legs and they tend to have, uh, at least in North America and in a lot of places, they tend to have bumpier skin. And they also have the ability to uh, survive in environments that don't necessarily have permanent bodies of water, like a lake or a river or a stream. They, that's why you notice lots of toads here in Albuquerque, for instance. I always thought they were so different. Well, we have a lot of other questions too. Melissa, we're going to go to you. What do frogs eat or toads eat? Well, that's actually a great question because frogs and toads are almost entirely insectivorous. Uh, they are very important components of our ecosystem in that they do keep insect populations down. Uh, they eat a ton of insects. And if it wasn't for frogs and toads, we would probably be overrun with insects. Wow. I... I don't feel like we see so many frogs and toads as much as I saw when I was a kid. When I was a kid, if it rained, all of, every puddle would have frogs just magically seeming to appear in it. And nowadays, it doesn't seem like that happens so much. Well, I was going to ask a lot of your uh, crew members uh, if they've ever noticed uh, toads in their environment, in their, in their neighborhood. Uh, we have a species of toad here in Albuquerque called the Woodhouse's toad. Uh, it's probably our most common toad species. And very commonly, when it's raining outside, they will actually hang out right by the street lights. And the street lights attract insects and the toads eat the insects. They've learned to go toward the street lights and check out, uh, see if there's anything good to eat. Wow, that's amazing. So crew, do you see any frogs or toads in your yards? Anyone want to jump in? Yeah? No, but I see them near the river. So um, I've actually seen toads in our backyard before, and we have dogs. So um, we have a dog named Tater. And um, he was trying to, like, play with the toad, but he doesn't really know his side. So he was, like, trying to, like, jump on it. And so we removed the toad and then put it um, outside our yard. And then the next day, the same toad was back in our yard. And we did the same thing again. We put it outside, and it came back. And so what we ended up having to do is just, like, scoop it up and go put it down by the river. What about that? Are frogs and toads territorial? Do they pick a home and then they want to stay there? 
You know, it sounded like with Lucas Lucas's case that that uh, individual was very attracted to whatever was going on in his yard. He probably had some good bugs to eat or uh, just uh, one other really important feature for uh, frogs and toads is the soil that they live in, especially toads here. Uh, soil health is important to these guys because when it's not raining and they're not outside, they're buried in the ground and they tend to try and find areas that help them conserve water the best they can while they're underground. So there must have been something about his backyard that that frog or toad really liked. Are horny toads considered to be actual toads? I have quite a few of those around my house, and I was wondering if those are considered to actually be toads. That is a great question, and the answer is no. Horny toads, it's a colloquial term. It's a it's kind of a commonly used term in parts of the southwest United States that refers to a type of lizard called called the, they're also called horn lizards. And New Mexico is great place for horn lizards. We have uh, a good handful of species and they're really, really cool lizards. They specialize by eating ants. Uh, and that's one of the problems with their conservation here in New Mexico is a lot of ant colonies have been kind of shaken up with the habitat destruction and with the influx of uh, alien ant species. So it has, it has had an impact on horned lizard populations here in New Mexico. But no, they are actually reptiles. Uh, they are lizards. And uh, there are completely different toads out there that don't have horns here in New Mexico. What makes a frog and toad not a lizard? Are they all in the same family? Well, frogs, toads, salamanders, and Sicilians are all part of the class amphibia. They're all amphibians. And one of the most common things about them is they do not have scales. Now, Sicilians, yeah, they kind of break the rule and have modified scales, but we're not going to talk about them too much today. Um, they are still amphibians. But one big thing about all frogs, toads, and salamanders is that they do not have scales. They also have very permeable skin that they actually breathe through. And that's why water is so important to amphibians because their skin needs to be moist for them to be able to breathe. So that's, that's one really big difference between frogs, toads, salamanders, and all the reptiles um, is, is the presence or absence of scales. Why do toads have bumpy skin? So a lot of the bumps on the skin of toads is uh, they are actually glands that are on their skin. And these glands serve different purposes in depending on where they're located on the animal and also between different species. Most of those glands help keep the skin moist, but a lot of them produce toxins that keep them safe from Lucas's dog, for instance. It makes them taste bad. In fact, there are poisonous toads in the world. There are. And I've actually got a special treat for you guys if you want to do that now. Will you show us a poison toad? Yeah, sure. This is Josh Butler. He's the senior zookeeper in the reptiles and amphibians at the Albuquerque Biopark Zoo. Okay, are you guys ready for this? We're so ready. Oh, wow, that's huge. So this is a Colorado River toad. We've posted pictures to childrenshour.org. Look for the episode Frogs and Toads. Also known as a Sonoran Desert Toad. And this guy has tons of bumps on his skin. He's got a really big one right here. Okay. That's actually called the parotid gland. And this parotid gland is responsible for this toad being very poisonous. She might chirp a little bit, but... You'll notice she has lots of other glands spread out across her skin. And those glands also contain some of the poison, but they also do help keep her skin moist. These guys are the largest North American toad, and they are found down in southeast New Mexico, but also mostly in Arizona. And we do have a couple of these guys on exhibit in the amphibian building if you ever want to come check them out up close. Josh Butler is the senior zookeeper in the reptiles and amphibians at the Albuquerque Biopark Zoo, and he's with us for the hour, and you are listening to the Children's Hour. This is Liam Lynch. Welcome back to the Children's Hour. 
we're just too lazy frogs Laying on a lazy log You might think we look the same But we're not the same We're not the same at all Cause I'm green and I'm blue I don't like pizza, but I do I don't like monkeys I really like monkeys I don't watch TV Hey, let's watch some TV we're both frogs, but we're not the same We like different things and it's okay Don't judge a book by its cover We're different from each other Different, but it's okay Cause I'm a Virgo I'm a Pisces I hop wherever I go I ride a five-speed I like eating bugs I like fruit I drink coffee from a mug Play the flute. If your great 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 mother was a dinosaur, and your great 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 grandfather was too, they were twenty feet high and they swallowed the sky. But look at you now. You live under a log And you are the tiniest frog In the coromandel Of New Zealand Come on and show us how you dance Archie Don't be shy, you're a groovy little guy Great 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 grandmother saw you here today and your great 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 grandfather did too From Gondwana land things didn't go as they planned just look at you now You live under a log and you are the tiniest frog you're a living fossil in New Zealand Come on and show us how you dance Archie Don't be shy, you're a groovy Come little on, guy Hour is a production of the Children's Hour Incorporated. Support provided by Electric Playhouse, an immersive entertainment and educational experience in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Now taking reservations for summer coding camps, battle bot leagues, and other educational opportunities for kids and kids at heart. Learn more at electricplayhouse.com.
Support provided by the County of Bernalillo, New Mexico, burnco.gov. Support is also provided by the City of Albuquerque Cultural Services Department and the Urban Enhancement Trust Fund. My name's Bubba. I'm a frog. A big, fat frog. People always ask me, Bubba, how'd you get to be such a big, fat frog? It's because of my favorite food, flies. Because you know you can have flies all kind of ways. You can have tandoori flies, fricassee flies, flies a la mode. Cajun flies with that little bit of on yon. Or you could have flies with fries. You could have flies in the fries. You could just have fried flies. That's a lot of flies. But you know what I really want? Is a date. Could you help me out? Let me tell you about my froggy friend. He lives in the water and he lives on land. He's an amphibian. He lives in between. He's got a big mouth and his skin is green. He's got a pair of great big bulbous eyes. They drop down when he swallows flies. His tongue shoots out. Oh, here they come. He's an all right over the gun. His name is Baba. He's a big fat frog. Been eating bugs all day here on this. It's getting late. He better croak loud if he wants a date. He's got long hind legs and like to be the champ of the frog jump Olympics down at Angel's Camp. You better keep those lovely legs out of view. Why? They're good for jumping, but they're chasty too. Now just wait a minute. His name is Bubba. He's a big fat frog. He's eating bugs all day here on this log. The sky is dark. It's getting late. He better grow loud if he wants a day. He can drink and breathe right through his skin. He's camouflaged so that he blends in.
Bubba the Frog is from the Bungie Jumpin' Cows from their 2020 release, Rock Candy. And over the break, you heard James Scott from a piano roll that came from 1906 with the Frog Legs Rag. Flea Bite is out of New Zealand, and they brought us Archie's Frog Song. And way, way back when was Liam Lynch from Songs from Lynchland, Volume 1, with Two Frogs. You're listening to the Children's Hour. This episode is all about frogs and toads with our friend Josh Butler. He is the senior zookeeper in the reptiles and amphibians at the Albuquerque Biopark Zoo. Before the break, Josh was showing us the Colorado River toad, which is the largest toad in the United States. And Flo has a question. How does prison diet frogs get out the prison exactly? Well, I know this is going to sound kind of gross, but you know how like when you sweat, you're just your skin gets kind of wet? Well, your sweat glands are actually doing exactly the same thing as your poison, as the poison glands on the dart frog. The glands are in the skin and they just kind of oozes out in very, very tiny amounts, but it's spread out over the entire frog. So over, because of all those glands putting out little, little droplets on the skin, it, that poison is basically coating the entire skin. And it's really interesting in poison dart frogs that when they get attacked by a predator, grabbed or what have you, those poison glands go into like hyper mode and will emit that poison really rapidly over the over the um, surface of their skin. So not only does this happen in poison dart frogs, but it also happens in toads in our own backyards. Those glands will emit the toxins and make them distasteful or um, make them feel sick or make them feel like they're it tastes like metal or just is bad tasting so a lot of predators when they when they go to attack or eat a poison dart frog they get a really bad taste in their mouth and a really bad feeling in their mouth and they'll spit them out and uh, this helps the poison dart frogs to survive so sometimes we go bullfrogging um and i caught this Ginormous. No, I did. I did. (laughs) Well, we both did. And Max has a question. And why? Um, why are the why are bullfrogs attracted to red? Because when we go um bullfrogging, bullfrogging, there is we have a red cloth and we hook it to a um to a string, tie it to a string, and go bullfrogging on a ditch. And it chases the red string? Well, it just grabs him like a worm or something, like fish. Uh-huh. And and it really just grabs it, and then we pull it out and then catch it. Wow. I've never heard of that technique being used. Wow, really? You're learning something from the children's hour. <laughs> yeah, I am. <laughs> um, I wonder, is it more like a cat chasing a laser? I think... If you're using a string, it probably does look like a like an earthworm or a nightcrawler, and that's it's try, it thinks it's prey, and that's probably what it's going after. Maya and Max posted a question in the chat: Is it called a bullfrog because it likes red, like a bull will go after red? I've never heard that. Uh, I've always thought they were called bullfrogs because they're really big, and their call is really loud and and just booming. I, I've never really looked into why they've been called bullfrogs, but I always assumed it was size. We're talking with Josh Butler. He is the senior zookeeper at the Albuquerque Biopark Zoo's Reptiles and Amphibians. And we still have a lot more questions about frogs and toads. We're also going to hear from the kids in the Extinction Diaries. But first, this is Kelly Welly, right here on the Children's Hour. Little guy keeps me up all night saying 
to dig more into why bullfrogs are called bullfrogs. Is it like Maya and Max wondered because they love the color red and they'll chase something that's the color red? Or is it like what our guest thought that they're just so big they're called bullfrogs? Well, it would seem our guest is correct. The bellowing voice of a bullfrog, which is very loud in the summertime when calling for mates is why they got the name bullfrog, kind of like a bullhorn, which amplifies a sound. Bullfrogs are a semi-aquatic frog. The large North American frog is native to eastern United States and Canada, but they have been introduced in the western United States and into other countries. The name has also been applied to other really big frogs in Africa, India, and South America. Bullfrogs need to live near bodies of still water. They breed in the early summer, and their eggs are laid in the water and hatch into dark-spotted greenish-brown tadpoles. Depending on the climate, the tadpole stage will last one to three years. Many bullfrogs are caught for food. When Maya and Max catch their bullfrogs, they just release them. You can see pictures of Maya and Max and their bullfrogs at childrenshour.org. Look for this episode page, Frogs and Toads. 
Once upon a time there was a tiny tadpole Who slithered to the surface of a tiny mud hole Legless and armless, defenseless and harmless Swimming with the fishes he was vulnerable But then he sprouted web limbs and a couple of lungs Till there was nothing but a bottom where his tail had once hung An amphibious leaper with insidious peepers Bulging at a target for a very fast tongue A bullfrog's tongue was wound like a whip With a big hot dab of sticky glue on the tip If you're an insect who's flying, watch out who's spying He's a patient tongue slinger who shoots from the lip A bullfrog croaks with the coming of spring But it isn't like a birdie when you hear a frog sing Though it sounds like he's retching, frog gets fine and fetching He can't resist the pull of his mysterious ring When bullfrogs croak, the sound will travel When bullfrogs croak, all the froggets have to see I'm sure you'll agree A full-grown bullfrog's a marvelous sight When he's sitting by a pond on a warm summer night He croaks without stopping, the frog eggs come hopping From lily pad to lily pad beneath the moonlight When bullfrogs croak, the sound Travel. When bullfrogs croak, all the froggets have to see. When bullfrogs croak, with guttural gravel, it's Mother Nature's way. I'm sure you'll agree. A smile on his face and a fly in his cheek He lived till he was old But when his body's cold He's gonna hitch a ride to heaven In an old buzzer's beak When bullfrogs croak The smell will travel When bullfrogs croak It finishes the circle you see in the gravel It's Mother Nature's way I'm sure you'll agree That was Zach Morgan with the title track of When Bullfrogs Croak and before my little piece on bullfrogs, you heard Kelly Welly, Froggy on My Windowsill is the name of that tune. In the background, Hoppin' Black Toad is Lobo Loco. Right here on the Children's Hour, lots more about frogs and toads coming right up. The Children's Hour is supported in part by an award from New Mexico Arts, a division of the New Mexico Department of Cultural Affairs, and the National Endowment for the Arts. This program was produced in part thanks to a grant from the Albuquerque Community Foundation and from the Conscience of Society Fund. Support for the Children's Hour is provided by Token IBIS, a nonprofit making philanthropy accessible to everyone. To sign up, go to tokenibis.org. The Children's Hour kids crew and our creative team have written a Children's Hour original musical, Icky, the radio musical. Learn about the pre-screening at childrenshour.org. There's a wind from the west and it blows my 
mighty, restless, and free. And you know that it's best if you go, for there surely will be trouble. Okay, stranger. You don't know me, and I don't know you, but I'm telling you this. And it might be true There's only one thing Gets a cowboy down It's the kind of trouble That we've got in this town Frog trouble mm -hmm. When I'm walking along Minding my own business They'll leave me alone If you ask me how I'm doing today I shake my head, I got two words to say Frog trouble, and here's two more Frog trouble, mm -hmm. I've known about heartache and what it can do Since the great frog rush of 42 When brave folks traveled from far and wide And all of them dreamed, and all of them sighed Frog trouble, frog trouble. that's what they said Frog trouble seem confused by the things that I say What is this frog trouble anyway? Come a little closer and I'll tell you my friend I don't know either, it's just pretend Frog trouble, I made it all up Yep I've never met frogs face to face As I've known any frogs on a first name basis And it's hard to imagine what the trouble might be But I like to say it importantly Frog trouble Bad, bad frog trouble So you don't know me And I don't know you But I'm telling you this And it might be true there's only one thing gets a cowboy down It's the kind of trouble that we've got in this town Frog trouble It's been pretty rough Frog trouble You gotta be tough Frog trouble Oh no Just what I need Trouble Another frog stampede Frog trouble Frog trouble Frog trouble Frog trouble. Frog Trouble is a title track from Sandra Boynton's CD. You're listening to the Children's Hour. Our guest today is Josh Butler. He is the senior zoologist of the amphibians and reptiles at the Albuquerque Biopark Zoo. The kids have a lot more questions, but we only have a little bit more time. Go ahead. How many species of frogs and toads are there in the world? Currently, there are over 7,300 species of frogs and toads in the world, which is actually really amazing because when I went to college, there was only about 6,300. So a lot of new species have been discovered just in the last 10 years. In a way, it's wonderful to hear that we don't know all the different species on our planet and that there's still more to discover. And in other ways, I worry that the reason you're finding out there's more species is because humans are going into more and more wild places. Is that part of what's happening? Yes, uh, there's also a trend in science uh, where scientists will look at a species of frogs that has a really large distribution and they'll start looking at their genetics. And uh, so a lot of the species that we've discovered, we've already known them for quite a long time, but because of the genetics and, and the phylogenetics, uh, that's the study of relationships uh, between species, we found that some of those species of frogs that really had large distributions are actually like three or four different species. Have frogs been around since the dinosaurs? The hard part to answer that question is frog bones and amphibian bones are not very thick and, and robust. So they a lot of them don't hold up to the processes that make fossils. So there's a lot of guesswork in that. They are considered to be uh, the 
early ancestors of reptiles. So amphibians have been around a long time. It's just, it's been hard to point out exactly when they came about and how diverse they really were. How do you become a zookeeper? It definitely takes a passion for working with animals. You have to kind of get over the picking up the poop. Uh, that is part of the job, but it also requires, you know, paying attention in school. Uh, I did go to school for a biology degree in college, and it takes a curiosity. You've got to pick up some books and 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 learn about this stuff. Uh, sometimes on your own, there's a, just a ton of stuff to learn out there if you really just kind of set your mind to it. So definitely stay in school, work hard, learn about your animals that you're interested in, and you'll find an opportunity somewhere. Josh Butler is the senior zookeeper at the reptiles and amphibians section of the Albuquerque Biopark Zoo. Thank you so much for taking the time and being with us on the Children's Hour today. Thank you. Bye. He didn't like the water. Sam didn't like the water. He went to the city. He had a quarter. Sam took his quarter and left the water. Frog named Sam, he didn't like the water. He left for the city with his quarter. He liked to sing real low That frog named Sam He liked to sing He liked to let his spirit show He said Boom, 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 boom Ribbit, ribbit, croak Boom, 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 boom Sam got a band Put on a show People and frogs came to hear Sam sing Came to hear him sing real low He said Boom Sam wondered where to go He missed his friends He missed the water Sam, Sam, he liked to sing He liked to sing real low Back in the pond they all sang about the water Extinction Diaries. In June of 2019, scientists warned that frogs were rapidly heading for extinction. An estimated 2,000 species, 40% of amphibians, face extinction in the next two decades. Already as much as or more than 50% of all amphibians have disappeared since 1970. Deforestation, pollution, and pesticide use are all major human-caused factors. Also, frogs and other amphibians are being attacked by flesh-eating diseases that are spreading by global wildlife trading. 
For decades, scientists have warned that specific chemicals used in logging and landscaping was turning male frogs into female, yet regulatory agencies and the logging industry have only resisted logical, insane action. We cannot let the voice of frogs become silent or humans will find ourselves facing the same outcome. Forever. My name is Arnold Oliveira, and this is a Small World Radio production. Folks, we have a special song that we'd like to play for you right now. It's one of our favorites. And, well, we hope it's one of yours. It's a song about the color green. It's not easy being green. Spend your days the color of the leaves. It might be better to be red or yellow or gold Or something more colorful like that No, it's not easy being green You blend in with so many ordinary things People tend to pass you by Cause you don't stand out like flashy sparkles in the water Or stars in the sky But green's the color of spring Green can be cool and friendly like Green can be big like an ocean Tall like a mountain or important like a tree When green is all you can be well, It can sure make you wonder why But why wonder why wonder When green is it's alright It's beautiful it's what I want to be Estaba la rana sentada cantando debajo del agua Cuando la rana salió a cantar Vino la mosca y la hizo callar La mosca, la rana que estaba sentada cantando debajo del agua cuando la mosca salió a cantar Vino la araña y la hizo callar La araña, la mosca, la mosca, la rana Que estaba sentada cantando debajo del agua Cuando la araña salió a cantar Vino el ratón y la hizo callar El ratón, la araña, la araña, la mosca, la mosca, la rana Que estaba sentada cantando debajo del agua Cuando el ratón salió a cantar Vino el gato y lo hizo callar El gato, el ratón, el ratón, la araña, la araña, la mosca, la mosca, la rana Que estaba sentada cantando debajo del agua Cuando el gato salió a cantar Vino el perro y lo hizo callar El perro al gato, el gato al ratón, el ratón, la araña, la araña, la mosca, la mosca, la rana Que estaba sentada cantando debajo del agua cuando el perro salió a cantar Vino el palo y lo hizo callar El palo al perro, el perro al gato El gato al ratón, el ratón a la araña La araña, la mosca, la mosca, la rana Que estaba sentada cantando debajo del agua Cuando el palo salió a cantar Vino el fuego y lo hizo callar el fuego al palo, el palo al perro, el perro al gato, el gato al ratón, el ratón a la araña, la araña, la mosca, la mosca, la rana que estaba sentada cantando debajo del agua. Cuando el fuego salió a cantar, vino el hombre y lo hizo callar. El hombre al fuego, el fuego al palo, el palo al perro, el perro al gato, el gato al ratón, el ratón a la araña, la araña, la mosca, la mosca, la rana que estaba sentada cantando debajo del agua. Cuando el hombre salió a cantar, de tu cuerpo alegría, Macarena, vino la suegra y lo hizo callar. 
la suegra, el hombre, el hombre al fuego, el fuego al palo, el palo al perro, el perro al gato, el gato al ratón, el ratón a la araña, la araña, la mosca, la mosca, la rana que estaba sentada cantando debajo del agua. Cuando la suegra salió a cantar, ni el mismo diablo la hizo callar. La Rana Done There by José Luis Orozco from Esta es mi tierra con José Luis Orozco. It's Not Easy Being Green was done by Rex Hobart and the Misery Boys from a CD called The Bottle Let Me Down. A Frog Named Sam was the title track off of Ben Rudnick and Friends CD. You're listening to the Children's Hour. I've learned a lot, and I hope you have too, about frogs and toads. But of course, there's always more to learn. Frogs and toads need our help to survive. There are things that we can do in our own backyards. We can create amphibian-friendly environments by providing clean water, hiding places, and insects to eat. That means not using insecticides all over your yard. We can also not pollute. And it's really important to be a responsible pet owner. The contamination that gets in our waterways from our dogs and cats' waste is actually toxic for the animals that live there. Please scoop your poop. And to help the frogs conserve water wherever we are, whether at home, at school, or work. And we all need to address climate change by reducing our own personal use of fossil fuels like oil and coal and natural gas. Think of the frogs. Be an amphibian champion. You can learn more about frogs at the Children's Hour's website under this episode page, Frogs and Toads. The Children's Hour is written by Katie Stone and produced by the Children's Hour Incorporated at the Sunspot Solar Studio in Albuquerque, New Mexico, with help from all of us on the kids' crew. Many thanks to Josh Butler, Senior Zookeeper of the Reptiles and Amphibians at the Albuquerque Biopark for being with us on the show today. We also want to thank the kids from the Extinction Diaries out of Redding and Red Bluff, California at KFOI. Find lots of information about us at childrenshour.org. Our podcasts are on our website and everywhere you can find podcasts. Or at patreon.com slash the children's hour. Or ask your smart speaker to play the children's hour podcast. We would love to hear from you. Leave us a message at our website or on social media. Find us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at TCH Radio. Our theme music is written by C.K. Barlow. Thanks for listening to the Children's Hour.